Hey guys, welcome to the Q Agenda because being queer doesn't have a formula, but yet it does have an agenda. So today I'm super excited to be here with Victor and Juliana because hey welcome guys. to LA TV. Thank you. Guys, so much to talk about. So much. So I mean, much. there's so much stuff happening right now. This week was the premiere for Pose. Yes. Yes, tens across the board. I loved it. I, right. This is actually the first time I watched it. Really? What? The first time I watched it. Where have you been? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know what's crazy? Because even in the episode, I don't know if you guys saw the part where he went into the meeting and he didn't want to go into the meeting because it was like, for him, it was directed to like, not his audience. Right, I, that's right. how I felt with Pose, but then really? watching it, it changed my opinion on it. I thought it was just directed not towards Oh my me. gosh, you have so much to binge watch though. No, you have yes. a whole first season. And I'm catching excited. up. And I actually I'm, really loved it. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. It's like to me with the, what I love the most about the show is that there's a whole like generation that was obliterated by HIV, yes. by AIDS, and you know, now we have meds and we have all this treatments and people don't talk about it. So right. for me to like go back and see it and relive it and see, you know, like what happened and what the community went through, I feel like it's Perfect timing to bring it up, particularly during Trump times. I think, For like, sure. it's like and also during Pride, during a time where we're celebrating our community, it's a great reminder to see, you know, what we've gone through in the past mm -hmm. and what it's taken to get to where we are now. So that's what I love about the show, that it's really diving into the history of our community and especially of the ballroom scene, which most of the country is not aware of. Yeah. That plays such a huge part mm -hmm. in today's influences in the LGBT community. Yeah. Culturally, yeah. I mean, that the first episode of the second season should be called Madonna because it's all about Vogue. <laughs> Vogue, Vogue, yes. Vogue, Vogue. But I also, what, what I love, you know, as we know, it's like the first show ever with a uh, you know, transgender cast. Yes. Um, do you feel like they honor it the proper way or? Absolutely. Mm. And that has a huge part um, or a huge thanks to the way that the show is created. Not only are they casting actual trans women to play these roles, but the people behind the camera writing the shows, writing the script, producing are also trans. Not all of them, but a huge amount of them are actually yeah. trans which is why you get these authentic stories and you get these authentic emotions and these authentic relationships. And also it plays a huge part in how much the actors are able to really give it all and trust in what they're doing because they have their brothers and sisters writing their story. Yeah. Absolutely, and I feel like also this, it breaks so many stereotypes and barriers with the trans community, with the Afro-Latino community too. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like- Because where have we been? Where, where I mean, it's like, it's like they don't exist or what's going on? Because yeah. it's like what we were talking about earlier that I said, if representation for Latinos and for African-American is hard, then for trans people is hard, then from Afro-Latino, and I grew up yes. in South America, it's yeah. like, we it's play like it like, you, like they, they don't exist, right. you know? So to see them on TV, yeah. it's like beyond. Even for me growing up and, you know, because my mom and my grandma speak predominantly Spanish, I would never see people that look like me. So it kind of disconnected me from even relating to it, even though it was like my culture. Right. You but do you I mean? also love being in a room with people who assume you don't speak Spanish? Yes. <laughs> it's like my <laughs> secret weapon, especially... <laughs> Coming originally from New York, you can't really assume, uh -huh. but in LA, people kind of assume if you speak Spanish, you look a certain way. Right. So I'm always like, hmm, what are you saying <laughs> and about And they're all there with the bochinche. Yes. yes. It's like, yes. I already know what you're saying. Yeah, I know what you're <laughs> saying. And then they're like, oh, where are you from? Like, they're always so embarrassed. Yes. But like, I love yes, it. but let's go back to what you were yes, saying about before you found exactly. out. <laughs> before you knew what no, the literally. Tea. But you know what's really funny today, even when like when we're next to the catering, it's like, you know, there was Latin catering today, it was Brazilian food. And the three of us immediately Latinos. go like, uh, does it matter <laughs> if you have that like, if you sign the contract to be Latino? Like when they put platano yes. and like beans and stuff, like the three of us were like, oh my god. I'm like, I need that. So I'm pretty sure I have it in my teeth right now. Oh, me too. <laughs> But I think, it, you know, it's amazing what they're doing with this show, taking it back to Pose, yes. Yes. again, with the representation. And I would love for people to share with us what their opinion is on, yeah. like, you know, what they're doing with minorities and how you feel about it. So make sure to go to at LATV Network so you can share with us your opinions and tell us what we'll you think. Your we comments. would love to hear, your, mm -hmm. you know, your thoughts on it. Even I mean, if it's shady, we want to know. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're shady, yeah, just bring the shade because I want to know, like, you know, I see it from my side. but Keep to, like, that shade away from 
from me. <laughs> I don't want it. Because like, the only shade I want is from a palm tree <laughs> on a vacation with a pink right <laughs> You know, I've always said that a hater is a fan in disguise. Of Absolutely. course. So, of course. you know what? Bring it, whatever you have to say, say it, you know, and that's it. But I feel like somebody that goes and jumps on social media and takes the time to actually grab the phone, yeah. log in, write a comment, to spew Create hate. A big page. It's like, that takes dedication. <laughs> You know, it that's does. like, a, you have the, the, you're putting energy on that. That's yeah. an effort, you know? So it's like, stop mm-hmm. playing games and you're a fan, so chill. <laughs> you know? um, but yeah, I feel like watching that show, even if you do have some criticisms about it, um, there's, when you're watching it, it's just so visually fabulous. Absolutely. You and I thought you would help. like have it like fashion wise. It's like incredible. Uh, the there's fashions. so many amazing moments fashion wise. So many, because again, they're, they're doing it in such an authentic way to what it actually was in the 80s and the style, the music, um, but the fashion on it is tens across the board. I think everything, the whole presentation in general, because even with the makeup, because that's what I really pay attention right. to, is like the makeup of it. Right, so like, did they get it right? Do you think they got it right? I, you know what's the thing? I don't know necessarily of the time, but I like that they experimented because I think right now we're in a time where everything's kind of neutral in terms of makeup right. right the the tide is changing especially for me i do i like crazy color everything so i think that's what i appreciate from this show and i think it reflects it's kind of like an underlying theme of their pride and right. you know well being i also feel like you know particularly on that ballroom culture um, you know, like on the first episode of the second season, there yeah. was some, an honor to Marie Antoinette. Yes. And they were wearing the, you know, like the wigs Extra. and the it was, makeup. It was so a it's performance. Like, yeah, you get to play with the whole thing. And, and, yeah. and for this first episode is, you know, the end of the 80s, the beginning of the 90s. So the music, the colors, the, the, what kids, people wearing. Those kids in that ballroom scene put the Met Gala to shame. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And when Absolutely. you think about it, these are people who... Like these costumes, they had to create themselves. Correct. They don't have money. They're like living on the street. Their house is their family. Yeah. So to create those looks out of with what you have, with the uh, little that you have, because it comes from pure it's a passion. Sacrifice. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. how they express themselves. That's uh, oh, I like. I, that another subject that I love about the whole thing is about like your created family. What is it that they call it? Like you know, like your when, chosen family. Your chosen family. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Sorry. I, uh, yeah, that's what I meant. Because, like, you know, as members of the LGBT community, we, we always get to choose our family. Because not right. always, like, not everybody, you know, their family likes them or mm-hmm. yeah. approve of their lifestyle or, their or whatever. Or they're kicked out of their homes. Correct. So. And they really embrace that concept on this show, which is really awesome. Yeah. And you're dealing, again, with, you know, African-American, Afro-Latino, Latino, which is even, like, on steroids, and the I, whole concept and of And I being. think also for, like, the newer generation who wasn't exposed to that, um, it kind of makes you appreciate it a little, a little more because you don't talk about these things. You don't really talk about the struggles of p- people that were in your position in the past. So even for me watching this show, I was kind of like, oh, I need to like really appreciate my, the time that I live in and the fact that even though it is difficult, I'm not going through half of the things that they were going through. And then the crazy part is it, it was in 1990. Like that wasn't even that long ago. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like that mm-hmm. was like... Probably like ten minutes ago for some people. Yeah. <laughs> so, Me. Which is crazy. Like, we won't talk about that next subject. <laughs> I was born six years later. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> right, yeah. And also, it's you know the within the concept of the show, there's also like the you know they're uh, rioting, not rioting, but like uh, you Protest. know uh, protesting, mm-hmm. protesting, and the familiarity with some of like the subjects of what they're protesting for. Right. It's so similar to what we're still protesting right yes. now, like right now. Mm-hmm. And you know what breaks my heart? In partic- there's a scene about that. It's a great moment. Is when they explain how somebody that when their T cells become less yeah, than yeah. 200, how they go from being HIV positive, they become somebody who they pretty much say has AIDS. You know, mm-hmm. like you become somebody with AIDS. Yeah. And people don't know that because people tend to think that if you're HIV positive, they immediately have AIDS. And that's right. not the case. Yeah. And people have been struggling with that concept for, you know, 20 years mm-hmm. when this whole AIDS epidemic happened. And the drugs, and they talk about how expensive the drugs were back then. And sometimes they didn't still, even work. And sometimes they didn't even work right. and they messed it. They were like toxins yes. that were put in the body. And that's still happening Today, we're like, uh, yes, we have and better drugs. That's if you could even get treatment. Correct. So many doctors wouldn't even look at you because, again, they didn't know what it was back then. Yeah. So They call it gay cancer. Even the scene where they, 
they had actually in the burial site remember the lady and she was like yeah we bury them separately because um we don't know if they're gonna spread the disease and yeah, he's like but they're dead, catch their dead. Yeah. and she's like well we don't know how this thing works i mean can you imagine how heartbreaking that must be for a family Crazy. See, but my, my problem also is like, again, the subject of like the, how expensive those drugs are. Mm -hmm. And they're still like most people, I mean, there are great programs out there. Like I just worked with an organization called Men's Health Foundation and they like help people with no yeah. means to like get access to the drugs or to like access PrEP and stuff like that. Things that we have now, like PrEP and PEP that, you know, and most of the Latinos don't even know that they exist, by the way. And they're not and marketed I say Latinos, to them. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I say Latinos okay. because unfortunately our community is like really super far behind on educating about all these things. But the fact that these drugs are still like, you have to be rich to afford these yeah. drugs or like even like to afford the insurance to cover these drugs. And nowadays we're still dealing with the same headache. I'm like, people, can we just like get to the point where like, you know, other countries in the world where like the, these drugs are like But honestly, that's what happens when you have an administration that doesn't believe in your community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which that does not want your community to su succeed. Yeah. So yeah. Yes, Trump, I'm talking to you. <laughs> yeah, we, we see you. Um, but uh, yeah, absolutely. Particularly, especially after, you know, where it's, it's Pride Month right now and he sent out that tweet supporting the gay community and yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's like, come on, let's take a minute to like, roll our eyes and just say like please girl come on like, but yeah. i think in to bring it more on a positive note though i think that it just goes to show you how far even though the lgbt community the lgbtq you know everyone that's included in this community has gone because we have such a administration that isn't for it but we're still making strides and still making waves and kind of rising above it and i think that that's why even with Pose, and it kind of makes you want to fight even more. Right. Like, that's the whole theme of the show. No, you you're absolutely I mean? right. So. And the fact that we're under this administration and that show is airing right now. Yes. And it came out under Trump times. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, and yesterday it was trending all, all across the country. Yeah. It was like the show came back for season two with a major bang. So people are listening and are watching. It's amazing the power on entertainment and how like you can really carry yeah. the message. I mean, not like there would be like, you know, uh, you know, three members of the LGBT commenting right now about <laughs> issues that affect us, yeah. um, you know, maybe. Uh, but uh, the fact that particularly uh, there was something that you sent me about uh, the, particularly the, in the trans community, the voices that are out there uh, on media are so limited. Right, because, you know, it's, it's kind of how the gay movement started and gay representation in media. That's kind of where the trans community is now. Um, you know, if you saw us on TV, we were portrayed as hookers, prostitutes, escorts, junkies, a corpse on Law & Order SVU, or some ridiculous caricature on Jerry Springer. Like, right. that's all you knew of trans people. Um, so now that we're starting to see um, trans people on TV and starting to see them in actual roles as human beings and their actual stories told, I think that's also what's helping people understand this more and um, shifting the ignorance because people are starting to see us on covers of magazines. Mm -hmm. They're seeing that people, we have families who love us and support us and we have people who respect us and we live normal lives and we, you know, we have husbands and wives and want to have families and it's showing us in that light that's allowing people to finally kind of catch up. Yeah. <laughs> And um, see that we're, you know, we're just like anyone else. Well, I mean, like, Victor, and you're out there representing a few brands and everything, like, mm -hmm. and, you know, like, you walk into these rooms, yeah. and what's it like? I mean, what's the reaction? I mean, I'll never know what, like, what a model <laughs> feels like, but it's like, you know, to walk into those rooms and see... be nice. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, even in kind of my, from my point of view, I think it's still kind of like it's, they're testing the waters. Um, because I remember when I first started out, boys in makeup, it was just like, what, huh, what's oh, going on? Oh yeah, that on? was a big no. Yeah, no. we're not doing that. And then, with the power of social media, we got the people to want it. So I think that's kind of an advantage that we have today, is that we don't really need a corporation to tell us what the people want. The people the say switched. what they want. Exactly. So then when that started to switch, it was kind of like, hmm, and now we're going through this phase where people of color, mostly like darker skin tones are just now being represented, even though it kind of goes into like the yeah. role of like the token. But you know what pisses me off about that? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, know, yeah. you know what bothers me about that? You know what bothers yeah. me about yeah. that? 
is the fact that before it before it became more acceptable to have people of color, people like influencers for influencers for example, mm -hmm. to be the faces of brands, mm -hmm. um, you would have um, the other influencers or whoever it was who was not of color, basically like doing brown face or doing everything possible to not look quote unquote white and look more ethnic right. or more, more white enough mm -hmm. where you were being accepted. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, they would have like somebody. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 no, it's true. Or even like a, like a model, a Caucasian model that was a little more audacious. Yeah. Then they'll all throw it, throw it into like a like yeah. a Latino campaign kind of deal. That you're like, no, no, no wait, like, think, like they would throw a check at it if it was cultural appropriation. But if it was authentic and an actual yes. person of color, no check for you. And yeah. I think also what no one really talks about when you're kind of in a position where you're the first one or one of the first, you get kind of like this reaction from all sides so you get reactions from people who look just like you who don't approve of what you're doing or right. feel like oh you're giving into what they want but then it's kind of like how are we going to be represented like you're kind of always stuck in the middle yeah so it's something that people don't talk about but you really have to like get in this zone where you're like you know what big picture thinking of course and opening the door and yes opening the door and allowing that path but some it's you have to understand, like some people aren't in these industries. They don't. They aren't blessed enough to like kind of know the behind the scenes. Right. So, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm just happy that kind of we're all creating a, a door for people not to have to go through that. You know what I mean? Too blessed to be stressed. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, the, in excuse my ignorance on this, but like no, I have no. to ask you. Um, but I, as far as I understand, even cosmetic wise, like makeup. Yeah. Um, for darker skin, it's much more difficult to like, you know, like to get the, the, the patterns and the colors than for like a Caucasian person that has. Is it because there's more products available or is it because, uh, I mean, it, it depends on the artistry? I don't know. Like, there I just don't know. I'm sorry, I know this is your expertise, no, 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 yeah. but there is literally no excuse. Rihanna put out a line with every single shade imaginable. It's just, I feel, and maybe I'm wrong, but I just feel like companies before didn't see the minority groups as a profitable market. Well, I will say, mm -hmm. unpopular opinion, but <laughs> there were like, Mac and Makeup Forever and companies like that had 50, 60 shades before Fenty Beauty. They had them in the 90s. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Um, I think the problem was the marketing. I think there w it was available. I think it's not as available as, you know, fairer shades. Like, right. But, I think that the one thing that did bother me was that companies that did have it already, they started marketing it after. Mm. So it, mm -hmm. I think it's a mixture of so many things where it's kind of like, if we market to people of darker skin tones, are people with fairer skin going to want to go to our brand? Like, right. it's kind of like sick thinking like that. Um, but like I said, the tide is changing and I'm just happy that it's finally finally like, because i even know like there, i read this article about like band-aids there were like this band-aids that were nudes. made oh God, and then they were like the, the ones that were in like color yeah, yeah so that to match your skin and the guy that launched them and this was like a, many years ago apparently like put a bunch of money into it and everything da, 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 and now they're like vintage collectibles that you can find in different places it's like nobody bought them nobody responded to them yeah. it could have been like the marketing as well mm -hmm. but nowadays like people are like the companies are really like looking into it and if you really look like they're they come in all different colors well, and i didn't forms. even know band-aids were supposed to be your skin color i thought band-aid <laughs> color was just band-aid color like i didn't know that no, was no, but there's some people you know flash. well nothing was matching well with that's this, the whole okay? point <laughs> <laughs> I was like i didn't know the like, flesh color yeah yeah, yeah but now they're probably like, catching noticeable. up with it but like the original guy who tried to push this i mean that you would think it's like oh my god this is like the bazillion dollar idea Totally went bankrupt. He was it. ahead of his time. Totally yeah. ahead of his time. Mm -hmm. Well, but now they're making them. They're yeah. out there, you know? Yeah. Or you can just get a Hello Kitty Band-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're great. I like get a Flint Flintstones Band-Aid or get a Hello Kitty or, you know what I mean? Um, but it's great that we're finally like seeing this kind of representation yeah. on television and particularly on LGBT content. Look at all the shows that are coming out right now. Yeah. That is crazy. You know, Queer Eye won like seven bazillion Emmys. Right. Um, RuPaul's Drag Race also won like bazillion Emmys. Now, what was the deal with trans and RuPaul? Oh, 
Poor child. I still don't know about <laughs> Here we go. So, so I, um, uh-huh. I, I will speak on this, but... Um, and you're friends with some of the girls. I right? am friends with some of the girls, and my best friend, actually, Carmen Carrera. Oh, there you was, go. That's um, Carmen. The, right, she's so... Uh, <laughs> she's stunning. beautiful. Um, I could talk about her for, Latina. Her for days. Latina. <laughs> Latina. Um, Peruvian and Puerto Rican. Uh-huh. Um, Carmen was the first contestant from that show to transition. And so... Um, during that time, she transitioned after she was on the show. Um, but obviously, after you finish the show, you're still doing like press and you're doing tours, mm-hmm. you know, drag race tours and performances all over the world. Um, RuPaul made a statement, and I believe that he still feels this way that um, trans women don't really belong in the drag world. Um, which. Yes, Carmen was the first, but like others have transitioned since then. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other thing is that yeah, Gia, for Gunn, a Gia Gunn, I believe Peppermint. Is yeah, her name. Peppermint too. So, uh-huh. um, yeah. And the reality is, is that okay? And I know there's a lot of misconception, so let's just put this out here: trans people are not drag queens. Right. We are not women in men's clothing or men in women's clothing. Mm-hmm. It's not a costume we put on. People, please. Get this, because this right We're not cross dressers. They're not cross dressers. We, we are not drag queens. It's not a performance. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, however, for a lot of trans people, um, they start off in drag and they start off, um, mm-hmm. you know, in that community because, right. you know, like we were speaking before on the chosen family, for a lot of gay people who are kicked out of their homes and um, go to find friends and family in like the nightlife scene where they can be free and liberated. Um, that's where a lot of people are introduced to the drag world. Um, and so for a lot of people who have feelings of dressing up or feel like they're trans, they kind of use doing drag as um, a way to get into it slowly, mm-hmm. to just build to up dip the your confidence. Toes. Kind of like um, into like the whole thing. Because, you know, a lot of us, including myself, when I started my transition, I was very afraid of what I would look like because I knew I had a huge effect on what people would say about me and how people would treat me. So for a lot of younger people, especially when they're doing drag, um, despite the drag persona, if they are trans, that's a completely separate thing. Right. It's just a tool that they kind of use to help them build who they are and their character and just become confident in themselves because that's what really drag is about, not just the performance, but just being comfortable and confident in who you are and not giving a crap and going out on that stage and killing it. For trans people, the stage is just everyday life. Wait, but drag is an art form, correct? Drag I is mean, an drag art is an form. art form, so anybody can do drag. Right, man can do drag. Man can do drag, anybody can do drag. Now, is there a specific like drag makeup uh, that, that See, goes on? Or, say, or is it like a tone? For me, I don't, I don't consider myself, like I wouldn't consider what I do drag. Like I consider it just, kind of what yeah. I want to do. Right. It's like not, I feel like there is a difference. Yeah, there I, is a difference. I think, I think drag is whatever you want it to be. You know what I mean? Because right. I think that even the techniques and the definition of drag is kind of morphing now with newer drag queens that right. are coming in. You know, you have older drag queens that are saying, oh, that's not drag, but it's kind of like, it's what you want to make it. But for me as a boy in makeup, I don't consider that drag. Right. Um, some people might, but it's, to me, like drag different. is just the performance aspect of it. So it's, a, but that's what I get confused because it's like the the dressing up. I mean, like the makeup, the the whole no, thing, or is it the performance? This, the lip sync, the whole. This, oh, this is nothing. This fabulous. I'm talking about even if I'm wearing lashes and a cut crease, and this it's right. not drag. Well, I mean, let, not let's drag. be real. We're all wearing makeup right his, now. His, <laughs> we all have makeup right that's now. That's just his expression. Yeah, it's yeah, part of his You know, like you're more. Yeah. And I love you when you do like the whole more extreme stuff that you have on on your Instagram. By the way, what's your Instagram again? Vikram, V I C M R E M. Check it out. <laughs> Shameless plug, <laughs> total plug. Which way, no, no. Take your time to like freaking you know but visit that, us and take a look at what we're doing. Work. Thank you. What's but your what's your Instagram? The Juliana Joe, not shameless plug. Okay. No, <laughs> no mine, shame in this game. At Enrique Sapene or Enrique Sapene, I guess with like the, the American accent or whatever. But yeah, because I see in your Instagram, you know, like the the, the, the more extreme things. Yeah. yeah. But then, how I think do you they're differentiate? They're definitely drag inspired because I think yeah. with my makeup, I I do get inspired by 
drag looks like cut creases and glitter and all of that. That's Contouring, very drag. That came from drag queens. Pretty much every trend right now came from the drag. What's world. contouring? It's when you make your face a little more it's, structured. Um, it's, um, <laughs> I'm just saying for people that don't know what it's contouring. a much cheaper version of plastic surgery. Yes. So that right you can now, wash my off nose at the end of the day. Is a lot people have been slimmer. doing it wrong for a long, long time, walking around <laughs> like Beverly Hills Science Projects, and they should just contour. Yeah. Oh no, but. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, you're like some messes can't be. Out. <laughs> at, the end of the day, at the end of the day, when you really think about it, everybody does drag. Yeah. Even the middle-aged man in Oklahoma working on his farm does drag. Every day we get up and we choose our what person. image we want to put out in the world. We choose what to wear. We choose mm -hmm. how to cut our hair. We mm -hmm. choose all of those things. All of that is a form of drag. When you strip it all away, we're all human. We all look the exact same. Mm -hmm. But how you choose to present yourself to the world, that's your version of draft. Correct. Mm -hmm. And you will bleed the same. And, and I love that you're saying that because actually, yes, you really look into that concept. And it's like, we're all just humans. And then yeah. what we wear, what we decide to put draft on is our drag. Draft queens just get paid for it. Their wigs are about, you know, two feet higher than most people. <laughs> Their heels are much higher than most of us. So they're just technically they, smarter than, than us because they get paid for it. It's just a much more fabulous <laughs> version. Totally. Totally. Yeah. I mean, I, I just think it's like when you think about like taking that baggage off you yeah. and just ex accepting it for what it is, it's so liberating. Mm -hmm. Then you're like so freaking constipated with like, oh yeah. my God, I'm going to look too gay or I'm going to look like a girl. I'm going to look yeah. like whatever. No, just do you. I right. mean, that's my way of thinking about it. I agree. You know, if you feel comfortable, do whatever the hell you want to do. If you want to have a feather out your butt, like go ahead and do it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and do that's my contribution. Do proud. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, so, and uh, on the note of what we were talking about with Pose, you know, the the actors are taking like super like uh, you know risky choices on the red carpets nowadays. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, I feel like they don't know since they don't know what drag is, they don't know that it's just as an expression of like, for example, right. Billy uh, um, Porter, Billy Porter, who now shows up at all the carpets with like this beautiful elaborate dresses like Christian yeah. Siriano right. did a couple of them that were incredible yeah there's this whole movement it's not even a movement it's been around forever and I think now people are just becoming more um, open to it and accepting it more we're now calling it gender non-conforming whereas if I believe if you were to ask someone like Billy Porter he would just say no this is just Billy Porter Billy Porter is fabulous Billy Porter will wear mm -hmm. a dress a suit whatever Billy Porter wants um, and whatever he wears, he wears beautiful. Oh my yeah. gosh, so much better than I can wear. Hey, by far, <laughs> like I look at him, I'm just like Jesus Christ. Like you gotta be, he's a star, but like I mean, to pull yeah. off what he pulls is like beyond. You beyond. gotta have like a confidence about you. It's yes. all about confidence. confidence. It doesn't matter what you wear, you just have to own it. But it's like every carpet that he goes on is an event. Yeah, absolutely. He makes an event out of it, and I love his advocacy because people are talking. Right. You know, whether you want to say good things or bad things, you're talking. Right. You know? And uh, this season is going to be super particular because now Patti Lapone is jumping. Broadway legend. Broadway legend. You know, now Sandra Bernhardt became a uh, regular oh, on the cast, she? too. She's a regular now. But I'm, I'm loving that they're bringing, you know, the archery, Patti Lapone. You yeah. know, Sandra Bernhardt is very opinionated, open, lesbian for many, many, many years. She was an advocate before advocates were like the way that they are now yeah. so and and on top of that their talents i mean right patty lapone alone who's freaking gifted by god i'm here for a post musical episode <gasps> that would be what an major it? that would be ryan murphy you're welcome you can mail my check <laughs> <laughs> at la tv networks yeah. <laughs> yeah so i mean i feel also like the actors on the show I mean, now it's like they're off to the races because yeah, yeah. you have to step up when yeah. you're p having people coming in and doing this. Which I won't lie, my only criticism of the show, and despite a lot of these girls on the show being personal friends of mine, um, I know they will not be mad at when I say this um, <laughs> because it's justified. But a lot of the girls who are the leads, it's their first acting gig ever. Right. Obviously, you have legends like Billy Porter, but so a lot of the complaints I'm reading and that I kind of agree on mm -hmm. is that the acting is um, just not at the level where people feel it should be. I've heard that too. However, I do feel that, again, A, it's their first acting game ever, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's on a, such a huge 
platform and a major huge and all eyes, all eyes were on that all eyes were on um and i think they're i think now after this first episode of the second season they're really really living their character and i think bringing in these legends patty lapone um and sandra it's really really just gonna naturally up their game yeah well i think good actors know how to I mean, yes, you want to shine and you're taking your scene and everything, but it's as good as what you give to your partner so when you're on the scene. Because if you have, yeah, an ensemble, mm -hmm. and when you have that caliber of talent, it's just going to lift you naturally. Right. If, you want to, if you give yourself yeah. into it, it will lift you. Because you're you not know? doubting it. Exactly. Exactly. Whereas if we're on the show together and it's both of our first times <laughs> ever, I'm going to be like, like girl. Uh, how good is she? <laughs> yeah. Like, what's I my mean, mind? And, and uh, I feel like we're going to see everybody just raising the bar. And that's going to raise the bar for all of us. Yeah. And in the entertainment industry. Because now we are, this role models are coming out now and paving the way for more people to have these opportunities. Because it's, it's right. again, the conversation started. And I think also at the end of the day, it's a business. So th that's how these people see it. And that's why they care when money is coming in. And it goes to show that trans women and gay men, lesbian women can bring in the views, can bring in eyes. They garner interest. And I think that that's a stereotype that they felt like only a certain type of gay man. If you were like mm -hmm. super extra in their eyes, that's entertaining, but you couldn't play the everyday role of, you know, just the everyday man, like the everyday gay right. man, of course. the everyday trans woman that, you know, exists and exists in abundance, but isn't being represented. You and know we just I mean? happen to be a, come in a skittle rainbow yes, of colors. Exactly. You know, it's, and all it's not just one type. I think even with me, um, everyone always says this. They always say when they see my Instagram first, they meet me and they're like, oh, you're nothing like I thought you would be like. Yeah. Is that a compliment? That well, I kind of, no, it's not a compliment. I get it. Yeah. I get it because of what they're being fed. Right. So I'm kind of that person that I get why you, I don't get offended easily because I kind of put myself in their shoes. Right. But everyone kind of always expects if you wear makeup, but you're just like a certain mm -hmm. personality. I got to see what shoes you're wearing first before I put my makeup <laughs> on. Mm -mm. It's all a spectrum. Like it's all like, I think that's why I kind of even like this group because it's, it's, different it's like a different perspective it's not just one I perspective. Lindo. Uh, I lindo, but you, know, <laughs> you think like you're like putting like then you're making judgment on that if, for example what we were talking about like an art form like in drag for example then i feel for example of all the social media platforms and everything yeah. that's why i really really like instagram because i feel that you can tell a lot about somebody by the images they post no i feel the complete opposite Same. no i feel like but instagram is the person Instagram is like it's like the fantasy. It's the fantasy version so of you. For me, if you see me in my everyday, you're not gonna see me in a full face, or you're not gonna see that regularly. But it's like kind of what you want to see of yourself. Right. Like you know what I mean. I always used to when I was smaller. I would always want to be like a celebrity. Like you know, we see a pop star in a music video. So yeah. now I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna make my costume. <laughs> I'm gonna put on a full face. I'm gonna do a photo shoot myself. And that's what... But you see, but isn't that in, at the end of the day, then who you really are at heart? It is, but it's like not the everyday. Yeah, of course it's not the everyday, but it already tells me about you being out there and the way you're representing yourself. Yeah. Yes, people always post the best things. Yeah, yeah. I also don't feel that... I, I, I also feel, sorry, let me take that back, that you shouldn't post on Instagram, like, my grandma died and, like, you mm. know, I'm at the mm. funeral and stuff like that. Like There's certain things that are, like, single. that intimate of, you know, yours and your family and everything. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm nobody like, has grandma any grandma died, shouldn't you be at a funeral while you're on Instagram right Ex now? Why are you posting on Instagram? <laughs> exactly. That kind of stuff. I do also feel on the same... Uh, vein that if people need support it's a great a way to reach out and say you know like I need some advice on this or like I yeah. you know like because a lot of people are looking at it you know and you'd be surprised when you ask for help the kind of reaction that you get yeah. for sure I just think that Instagram um, just because it's the largest platform right now um, has been developed into this thing where it's really, or people are using it in a way to create their own brand. Everybody's making themselves a brand. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like when you're seeing people on Instagram, you're seeing their brand version right. of themselves, yeah. not who they necessarily really are. Um, it's like a piece. 
It's like a piece. A piece. The cute, definitely. pretty, filtered Photoshop piece. Yeah, yeah exactly. you got the, 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 the pretty filter. I mean, but I, I mean, I guess I understand what you're saying. Yeah, they're using for brand, but I, I kind of like. I, I still feel like at the root of it, you get a taste get of like what the every, person is. So if you want to know how someone thinks, you go on Twitter. If you want to see what their ideal version of themselves is, you go on Instagram. And if you want to see someone really share their life and their personality, you go on YouTube. Well, like um, it's all like it's I, I, I think you nailed it. And on that vein, <laughs> you guys, you have to find us at LA TV Networks everywhere. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. Particularly go to Instagram and check us out because we're always yes. putting up fun stuff and our stories and what's happening in our day-to-day -day stuff, like opening more conversations. We want to know what you're thinking. And then also, while you're at it, you might want to check out Enrique Sapini <laughs> and the Juliana Joel. Vikram. So stick <laughs> around because this is just a conversation that is starting right now. Come check us out constantly because we are probably talking about the things that you want to know about, but nobody's talking about. So feel free to hit us up and let us know what you're thinking. Thank yes. you guys for being with us today. And I'm so excited about my people here. Yes. Check us out. Have a great rest of your week. Bye, y'all.